Thank you. Kathy Higgins is the NBI, the New Buildings Institute Research Director, and has over 25 years in energy efficiency, strategic planning, research, policy, and large-scale project management. At NBI, she manages work involving the Zero Net Energy Buildings, measured performance, emerging technologies, market assessment, and electrification and decarbonization. Kathy is currently leading a $5 million field demonstration in Los Angeles on the retrofit potential and energy savings for shading and lighting technologies. Other recent projects include the New York Getting to Zero Study, a gap analysis of California's zero energy emerging technologies, and the energy performance of radiant cooling and heating systems energy used with the University of California, Berkeley. Prior to joining NBI in 2000, she served as director of the Oregon Municipal Energy and Conservation Agency and was a commercial conservation manager with Bonville Power Administration. Kathy was recognized as a 2018 Woman of Vision by the Portland Daily Journal of Commerce and has received Oregon and national awards for her work in energy efficiency. Kathy, take it away. Show us all about the better way, the sooner the better introduction into the building electrification technology report let's see if you can see my screen you can see that i think you just need to make it full screen and then you're right yep perfect bingo love that thank you sean thank you everyone i will just get right to it this uh is a snappy name for a very compelling and contemporary topic of electrification you heard ingrid and susan and others speak to the importance of this i'm covering four topics that you'll see as we go along together on this uh, as sean said please just be active in the chat and i'll get to them after i'll just pause for a moment here is that advancing okay sean yeah, yep. okay, great. Oh, You're down, beautiful. Your dialed. You're looking at my beautiful uh, area where I live in the Columbia Gorge. You're seeing that there is this is a southern, this is a California based um, electrification roadmap, although it's very transferable to other regions anywhere, really, um, with some customization, as you'll see. But the technologies that I'm going to speak about are certainly universal. Um, it's authored by myself and Alexi Miller with some great additions, including Sean as a reviewer and contributor on laundry. And we also have some extensive surveys from uh, manufacturers through some work EPRI did for Southern Cal Edison. So let me get into the introduction of what it's about. It is really intended for efficiency programs and program administrators. It is a guide to what you do in a program leadership way to advance and accelerate electrification technologies. And it should tell us three fundamental things. What's the status of these technologies today? Where are they at? Where are they headed on the road to adoption? And what do we do to overcome the barriers that exist to getting them um, adopted more universally? So usually when I speak about this and in this group, you know, it's, it's a choir and we need to sing together and we know why buildings have a relationship with carbon and have a relationship with uh, decarbonization goals regarding California's uh, greenhouse gas emissions, that we have a target in California to electrify buildings, um, that buildings role in that is significant, and that no matter what we do upstream at the grid, we if we don't decarbonize buildings, it's not going to get us to where we need to be in terms of, uh, of um, reduced carbon emissions and climate benefits. But yesterday, I had to pause. And yesterday, I had to say, what else do I want to bring into my work? What else do I want to bring into my life? What else is important to unify us, as we heard yesterday, around this topic that we work in? And so I just threw this in last night. I hope that's good by all of you to recognize this amazing young poet laureate and she's from California and she grew up in the very area that our work is impacting and that some of the words which I've just extracted a few that are very transferable to our work we need to author new chapters we need to find our power and we need to find light that opens up the darkness that has been fossil fuels in our buildings and that's impacting the very topic of equity um, that is so prominent today because of the emissions impact to health and well, well-being. So that's a little bonus. I hope you um, follow that topic because in the purpose of why we work in buildings, in California, over 84% of all the space heating equipment in everybody's homes, of all the water heating equipment, 90% is, is fueled by fossil fuels. 
much higher penetration of current technologies than most people realize as, as professionals, you might know that. But important is that we only have a 2% adoption rate of the main technology that's going to electrify buildings and that's heat pumps. 2%, that's abysmal. We have got to put our, our foot down on this road, on this uh, technologies roadmap and through a number of mechanisms I'm gonna show you because it isn't enough to green the grid and deliver clean energy to buildings that are burning fossil fuels. So the recap on you know what we're doing with buildings has to do with these factors that you're already very familiar with. The final one here, technology advancements. First three get mentioned a lot. I just am really bullish on the fact that one of the motivators we can use externally in the business environment is that people like the newest technologies. People want to have um, advanced technology. So that's just another messaging item and a leverage point. So I'm here and giving you this overview and in doing so it's much too much as you can see in the top here, the better full report is over hundred pages. It is a deeply comprehensive as, as the sponsors asked us to do, look at all the technologies across these four end uses, categorize them around these fundamental items of what's their status, what are the roadblocks. So what we've done to, to tell you what you will find when you look at the report is, for each end use, there's a, a, a extensive section that has these three points you see on the right. What is the impact and importance of that technology? What's its status? And what's its roadblocks and recommendations? So um, it's kind of helping you to know whether there's something of interest there for you to look at. And then in addition, we give um, some background on refrigerants and grid factors, packages with emissions information and then the commonalities. But because we know 100 pages is a lot, it's good for the, you know, to dig in when you're running a program. But we did, rather than do try and make 100 pages, have a two page summary, executive summary. We have a 32 page, very highly graphical uh, kind of takeaway that accompanies that. So we have a summary and the full report. And it's delivered to you in layered information and to those funders. By layered, I mean that there's very good details that are still really approachable, as you can see here, where we can look at space heating heat pumps. We just heard Susan talk about VRFs. Um, I cut this off before that, but every heat, space heating, cooking, laundry, and water heating technology is, is rolled up with current information like that in a very approachable way in the full report. And so are roadblocks. And then so are recommendations, the three topics. So first there's a layered approach of the, of the narrative, then there's a more graphical approach in a table, and then we have a, a visual approach of the status. So that's kind of the three layers that'll, that'll help people navigate that. So what are these technologies specifically and how did we go about deciding um, their, their scoring? We created a thing called the matrix um, and had a little fun with that name. We didn't get you know, Reeves to come and look at it, but he might. And um, then we have the 38 measures. So there's 38 technologies that by definition of electrification that we are using, which is that they displace incumbent gas technologies. Not every electric technology is clearly, you know, not box top sets and not plug-in devices. These are things that the incumbent technology is predominantly uh, fossil fuel fired. So you can see the, the laundry list there, if you will. And we looked at them by these four end uses by new construction and retrofit, and across five sectors, higher ed, large and small commercial, multifamily, and homes. And then we scored them um, with professional allies, people on our team, our advisors, and uh, the input from the surveys of manufacturers across how ready are they today? How available are they? Can you go get them? How easy or not? Are they in application? That's a inverse way of just making sure that the three is always a high score um, if it's got field barriers and things like that. And importantly, how aware is the industry in terms of uh, their the product or um, confidence in it would also apply there. And then compared to other options that would be electrification technology, what are the GHG reduction potential? So clearly they all would be very high compared to what they're replacing. But if there's options to put in different electrification technologies, how does that particular technology rank? So into kind of the, 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 the graphic that people really um, 
the well, honestly, your early early um, viewers of this, it just got delivered to the sponsors yesterday. So it's very, very recently produced. And uh, they have a uh, graphic, as I mentioned, that's very clean and quick to see. And then some some roll up takeaways for each technology. The important thing when you when you go to look at this is that we've made it um, and I know that you can see my mouse so that you can you can quickly glance down under readiness and availability because that quickly tells you if those are all the way full and a score of three, then you can go get those and they don't have a technical issue or in terms of progression and, and development and you can put them in now. They might have um, some field issues that you need to be aware of. And if they're highly, if the market's highly aware of them, then you need to be, you know, getting those into into buildings in lieu of other items. So you're going to see, you know, the narratives here, and you're going to be able to have this uh, presentation from me for further review. But I'll show you that we have this on each of the end uses, because as we know from space heating, a lot of those technologies are are um, really common. But heat pump water heaters in uh, in water heating have been around, I sold, I literally as a 20 something early in my career sold heat pump water heaters in the 80s. That's how long they've been around as a reliable technology. Adopted, very little. Those barriers we understand now, they are the gateway drug for um, the solution of overcoming hot water uh, that's delivered through fossil fuels. So heat pump water heaters were part of advanced water heating initiative. There's a lot of momentum around it, but they're super under adopted. And yet the 240 volt for new construction and a retrofit where there's enough electricity at the site, they're ready now. We are actively working on getting the 120 volt, which would be a plug and play solution. Um, there's gonna be some field tests this year in California. Many of the utilities are involved in advanced water heating initiative. We're working with manufacturers to get those out into the field, their, their uh, prototype units, and assure that a smaller uh, amount of power supply will still meet the demand needs of the of the customer. We don't want to, you know, create a, a market expectation and then have it not meet needs. So, a lot of momentum, a lot of interest. Cooking. If you've ever met uh, Richard Young or you're familiar with uh, Frontier Energy, you know how bullish they are on induction cooking. Um, that's just fantastic technology. And we've got to not step ahead in, in the um, area of cooking and go to glass top radiant as a solution over, over gas because we'll have dissatisfied customers and uh, the market. They're very, we're very fond in cooking of our gas technologies, but you touch an induction range, you use it. And as, as some of the best chefs in America have said, and Europe, never go back. So we've got a lot of uh, learning there, but not really technical barriers, no problems with the uh, technology, just getting people aware of them. And so we've got residential and commercial solutions in our roadmap. And then to laundry, um, you know, we have a kind of a blend of things, smaller set of technologies, but fundamentally we're looking at the gas, um, a gas dryer being only part of the market share. Electric resistance is a highly inefficient approach, but widely used. And there's some much more efficient uh, technologies such as, the, uh, such as the combi, what we call a combi washer dryer, condenser dryers, and heat pump dryers that uh, we need to advance into buildings. I think Sean has one in his home. Um, they're just not very um, widely used, partly because of their size. Um, but we know that the European manufacturers are watching electrification and super excited to have a larger market share if we can make the, make the um, market available for them. So again, technologies that are already in place, as you can see here, but under adopted. So although this, this guide is written around the four end uses, there is a little, what I call the menu, and that's by sectors so that you can take an easy glance and see that no matter which sector, um, you, can, you can kind of menu out the options of these technologies that could go into that type of building. I think I'm doing okay on time. I wanna to speak to energy and emission impacts. The previous speakers had some wonderful data on that. In the study, um, we did work with EPRI and they, we modeled, this is not the recommended set of technologies, this is a set of technologies that were modeled so that we could have a baseline of a gas technology here for single family, multifamily, a middle uh, 
electrification and the best electrification um, that we could recommend. And then the point, especially for programs, they need to look at, you know, how much savings might we be getting there? So then we translate that into um, several climate zones, four climate zones across California and single family and multifamily homes. We take a look at that for site energy savings for changing those four technologies, not whole building because there's a lot of, there's other energy use than those four technologies, but you're getting 50% um, minimum energy reduction when you levelize a gas fired um, BTU burning equipment into kilowatt hours so that you can have a level playing field and just say, you could have done the same with electricity, make it be to use. But for the point of comparison, it's really a percentage change. Here's a sum of energy used. And then the emissions savings are really, really impressive that you get CO2 savings on the 80 to 85% um, level. And that as you were, if you dive into our reports or even these slides, the access is very by climate zone because of course you have different amount of, of uh, energy use based upon the high Sierras versus Sacramento, for example. And within the guide, we share all that, um, those climate zones and some roll up tables that are easy at a glance again, especially to the program audience that it's for to start to look at their area and um, some of the metrics that are important to um, justifying in, in increased investment. And we have two of the technologies, air source heat pumps and heat pump water heaters compared in Southern California. Um, so back at the technology level rather than the, uh, the uh, building package level. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna close with a takeaway slide, but it's, it's so dramatic and so clear that the, the emissions reductions have gone to electrification. They're all 60, 70, 80%. And um, we've got dramatic energy savings too. So in this last section, I wanna to go to the point, you've seen that we have um, a status where are the technologies now through the, through the Harvey Ball chart, um, what are the, the um, locations of those technologies in terms of readiness and awareness. And then our roll up is to look at <clears throat> what are the um, recommendations? What's the roadmap to do, the, do activities that will greatly accelerate that? I just did a snip from one example here because again, it's a very deep dive. We can't, you know, together on the, on the webinar go into all of them, but I had to cut off the bottom, um, which has emerging and international products. We do have that in the, in the uh, reports as well, but it's important to see that we looked at this in the same way the Emerging Technology Coordinating Council in California does, that we have technology market and program um, pathways and then we have those coded into a, a 10 year kind of a roadmap that if there's nothing in here in the gray, that's technology. That means, as I said earlier, these are ready to go. You don't have to do anything to get the product ready. Whereas for example, here in the 120 volt, we've got some, some work to be done right away so that we can move forward. So we call this roadmap at a glance and that rolls up the layered of information where here's an example in space heating, support and educate the industry midstream. Um, everyone on this call probably works in our field. You know that the midstream parties, the suppliers, the installers, that the builders, there are voice, there are interactive party to a uh, building owner, to a homeowner, to um, the contractor who's buying the equipment from the supplier. We've got to work and provide the, the range of different things that plug the holes to getting them everything lined up for them to be able to advocate for recommend and feel confident in those technologies and representing those technologies. So you see in the, you'll see in the report that we have a variety of recommendations. I'm just go back for a second. Um, in each section for space heating, water heating, cooking and laundry, there's three to five clear tables like this. And then because there's so many things that overlap across all electrification technologies, I didn't wanna say build demand you know, four times in every, in every <laughs> end use. Um, so I have a section called the collective strategies and that you see these on the upper right, the five collective strategies that raise the, the sea for all um, electrification technologies. And then we have the similar table on those and that's a universal thing. And that's where programs, um, I'm sorry, where policies come in 
that isn't as, as applicable at the program level because policies are more statewide. Um, you see an example here of strategy one to build demand, create compelling value. Um, another example here is make the business case work. I'm always pretty bullish on the fact that we can have all the great rationale you want, but you're a plumber, you walk away every time from a gas water heater, you don't have callbacks, you know they're gonna be satisfied, they're gonna get plenty of hot water. They're, they don't feel that way about heat pump water heaters and it costs them more time to put it in. How do we make the business case so that those people who are the frontline workers feel it's in their interest and that it's a good business for them to install heat pump water heaters? And that for the audience of the full report, um, what are you doing at the program level? You've gotta be investing heavily now. You gotta be layering your incentives with some of the other things statewide, uh, combining perhaps with non-energy folks like health, health industry about uh, why you should change, uh, get fossil fuels out of homes, for example. Having funding and financing ready, um, making sure the economics are effective. So these collective strategies are kind of the big picture and universal items. So as I said, key takeaways for a fairly, you know, 100 page report with a 30 page summary, they're not probably anything too new to the folks on this call. We've got great savings and critical to meet climate goals. We're not gonna get there if we don't uh, um, work at the building level. Um, we have plenty of technologies. There's no barrier to why a building can't have all electric technologies that is technical, um, but we need to do these items that have to do with um, working at the midstream and the um, production and get our programs in line. So I am glad to make sure these slides are available through our friends at Redwood or directly if anyone <clears throat> wants to email me, but we will not be putting them onto the website till February 25th out of uh, respect to the funders who just got them yesterday. Um, in addition, they got a spreadsheet tool that lets them um, do all that scoring and change assumptions. And so on February 25th, we're doing a national release and they'll be forever embedded on our site. Thank you. Fantastic. I, there's so many people who are disappointed that this report isn't available sooner. <laughs> I, I actually didn't quite know that my communications partner <laughs> department wouldn't let me just start <laughs> sending it around. I'm not used to that either. Um, like, I'm done. I want to <laughs> to email it, right? It doesn't go up on the website, but you'll email it? Um, maybe if somebody asks me directly. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, well, maybe you put your email address over in the chat. Oh, yeah, I will. I and, will. And, and that will make... Um, that plus, you good. saw those funders, the, the five utilities, they have it too. They would probably be very flattered and happy to have people contacting them at those utilities to say, wow, we're excited about what you what you help fund. That's uh, even even better, you know, because okay, it's theirs. We'll they, in a way, they own it. Yeah. You know. Put that slide back up so we can see who. Um, okay. Who yeah, we'll do that real quick. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, then? Okay, so then there's comments versus questions. A lot of questions on how do we get a copy of the report? You know, Martin here was speaking to the frustration of not having enough available induction. A commercial mm -hmm. kitchen so far almost no offerings for commercial kitchens very frustrating mm -hmm. home centers costco now keep in mind this is a california experience as opposed to a national experience mm -hmm. um, that's that is something because the south so many parts of our country have electric commercial kitchen uh, kitchens in use like for mcdonald's and everything else um kathy did your report address variable capacity hvac heat pumps yes excellent um did let's see uh kevin clark wanted to have you fill in a, a spot because he says ream will have commercially available 120 volt so like retrofit ready heat pump water heaters in april 120 volts yes you're um, talking about 120 volts yes so I yes guess they will uh, since i know there's a few different people who um have like they want to to respond to the technical availability things like that as an example mm -hmm. do you have a way of keeping this updated so people can send you like a, the most recent news or it I depends really on funding as a nonprofit, um we we do try and get and we, we're one of the major funders of this from our from some some uh, 
um, foundation funding. And um, yeah, we we put we continue to ask to to keep our our content live like we do our getting to zero database. That a lot of people are familiar with. We know that that's important. Um, but right now we don't. We just got it out the door yesterday. So. Um, it is something that will get green quickly, which is, and in many ways we, we tried to avoid some of the references like to specific technologies. Um, we don't name any manufacturer's equipment per se, because that's an area that gets green really quickly. I mean, sorry, that gets not, doesn't stay fresh, but. Um, <clears throat> then Tom wanted to tell you that he thought it was a very helpful matrix and recommendations that they love the consumer reports type graphics, especially for consumers and builders. Um, let's see. And yeah, people keep on saying oh, we want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, at that last slide, I do want to say, I want to recognize that and that it's, you know, I feel that way too. I would just, um, and so you can answer this, Sean, will you, will, you will have the emails of everyone that's participants. I mean, sorry, that's attendees today. Yeah. Like you have them in a, in a registration. I commit to making sure that the link and announcement when it is, you can have all, both the summary have it, you know, use it. I commit to getting an email to everybody that's here today so they don't have okay. to think so about it. Then I commit that you will get that email list um, from okay. Amanda. Okay, <laughs> yeah, from, thanks Amanda. <laughs> and, and she'll send you over the 127 people or so who are, are watching right now. And, um, yeah. and that'd be really cool. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'll go to hey, the, I'll Are go there to the other comments? Because I could probably introduce um, Karen mm -hmm. and give her an extra couple of minutes of your time. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll look over at the comments and communicate that way. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Yay! Terrific report. Hopefully